to look at for the unit and then we're done with new info. Okay, so we have talked about absolute value before. What is absolute value? Okay, so absolute value bars are the two long lines. And so let's say there's a number of like negative seven sitting inside of it. What does that mean? Okay, so this is what is the absolute value of negative seven, which is because why? Because it takes the opposite, or it makes everything positive. Okay, so absolute value says everything that, that is what? Am I right? Everything is positive. Okay, I'm, I'm going with Charisma's wording here, which is fine. Okay, whatever we take, we're making it positive. Do we agree with that statement? Yes. So, can we also then agree... It could never be the fact that the absolute value of something, what does, F, what does X stand for? A number. a number. Okay, so could the absolute value of a number ever equal negative two? No. No, why not? Because absolute value is always positive, right? So this isn't mathematically possible. Agreed? Okay, let me ask you something else. What is the absolute value of negative six? Six, six right, no problem. That wasn't like a trick question. What is the absolute value of positive six? Six. So can we also agree that two numbers have the same absolute value? Can we agree with that statement? Right, six and negative six have the same absolute value. So two numbers give us the exact same output, the exact same answer. Can't equal a negative, and that two values can give us the exact same answer when we are talking about absolute value. We agree with those statements? Okay, so here we go. Today when we are looking at equations, we are going to be looking at equations that now include absolute value bars. <laughs> now, you'll notice I'm quite dramatic with my absolute value bars because absolute value bars have a way of really quickly turning into ones for my students. So make sure you're really sure what your absolute value bar is and that you're not accidentally turning that into part of a number or something else. Okay. When we want to solve an absolute value equation, absolute value bars fall in the same location as parentheses. So remember how I told you that PEMDAS kind of stinks because it's missing a lot of things? Yeah, there's, there's no A for absolute value bars anywhere in PEMDAS. Another reason why it is flawed, okay? But absolute value bars fall in the same location as parentheses, which means these absolute value bars are holding on really tight. Okay, anything inside those absolute value bars are stuck. They're kind of like two posts in the ground that we cannot budge. Okay, but anything that is outside of the absolute value bars, those are fair game and we undo those just like normal. So what up here can we move away from the absolute value? Right, we can undo adding seven by subtracting seven because that is our normal solving equation rules. Okay, so our first step when we are solving is going to be to get 
the absolute value bars by itself. Another word for that would be to isolate the stuff inside the absolute value bars. Now, there could be one number sitting inside of here, or there could be a hundred numbers sitting inside of here. I won't give you one of those. But the key is that the only thing that we are moving in this stuff, in this step, is the stuff that's not inside the absolute value bars. Okay, I tell my students to pretend like I'm holding on to something tight, except I'm not very strong. So you have to pretend that it's like Mr. O'Neill holding on to something really tight because he's stronger than I am. Okay, if you haven't met Mr. O'Neill, he's the teacher over here next door, the one that was at the door this morning. He's much stronger than I am, so we're just gonna go with him. Okay, so if we subtract seven, what happens here? They cancel. What happens here? And what do we have left to bring down? Okay. Once we get the absolute value bars by itself, we need to undo an absolute value. Okay, to undo absolute value bars, we need a positive and negative option. We undo absolute value bars with a plus and a minus. <clears throat> And the reason why we do that is because of exactly what you said here. If I say, okay guys, what number has an absolute value of six? What should you be telling me? Six. And negative six, right? The positive and the negative option both have an absolute value of six. So right here, what numbers have an absolute value of five? Five and negative five. Okay, so to undo the absolute value bars, we are considering two options. And here's what I tell my students to picture. Imagine these two bars falling down. And we need a bar giving us each direction. Okay, one option tells us that it can equal the positive five. And one option tells us that it can equal the negative five. Because what is the absolute value of five? And what is the absolute value of negative five? Five. Right, this is one of the first times that we have to consider that two numbers have the same answer right that's a weird concept we haven't had to think about that before okay but there are actually multiple times in math that we will be looking at later as we go throughout the year but there are things that happen in math where two different numbers can give us the exact same answer okay so five the absolute value of five is five and the absolute value of negative five is five okay so both of these are our final answer. What does x equal? x equals five and negative five. Both of those are options. Yes? If we like take a test in this problem, it's like on a test, do we have to put like both options? Yes. Right, because you'd be missing a complete answer if you did. Correct. C kind of, because you get points for the word before, so yeah.
Okay, so four times the absolute value of x plus three equals 16. Okay, absolute value bars are stronger than parentheses. We cannot distribute through absolute value bars. Nothing goes in, nothing comes out. Okay, which means if our objective is to get what's inside the absolute value bars by itself, what do we need to get rid of? The four. How is that four connected? Multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? Division. So we are going to divide each side by four. We okay? Okay, so these cancel. That four does not do anything to the x plus three, right? Nothing goes in, nothing comes out of those absolute value bars. And we get the absolute value of x plus three equals four. Now, how do we undo the absolute value bars? What do we have to consider? Both options, right? To get rid of this absolute value sign, we need to consider both options. We need to consider x plus 3 could equal positive 4. I wrote a 4, but I said a 3. Let's try that again. x plus 3 equals positive 4. What's the other option that we need to consider? X plus three equals negative four. And then unfortunately we now have two equations we have to solve. I know, right? These can get kind of long, but that's okay because we know how to solve well, so we're just gonna start solving. How do we undo adding three? Now, here's where my students get a little bit too lazy and they think something's going to happen that doesn't. This is not going to be the same number, just a negative and positive. Sometimes it is, but that is not a guaranteed statement. So make sure you're checking your math because negative four minus three is what? Seven. Negative seven. And so our two answers here are x is 1 and x is negative 7. Yes, Aubrey? How do you know when you're like, I don't know how to like explain this. How do you know when to like, when both options are the x or like the like answer? How do you know? So like on the last problem that we did, how do you, because we did like both options for x. Because x was the only thing inside here. So I'm taking whatever is inside of here, of here and I'm dropping the absolute value bars. I can drop the absolute value bars because just like to undo addition, we use subtraction. To undo absolute value bars, we write both options. Okay, so I got rid of the absolute value bars by writing both options and I'm leaving what's left inside of there. Okay, so what's left inside of the absolute value bars here is x plus three, which gives me something I still have to solve. Does that answer what you're looking at? Yeah. Did you have a question? Yes. So yes, like good. In the absolute value, like inside those two lines, like you never do like x plus three and then x minus three. No, you never change what's inside the absolute value. The only thing that you're changing is what it's equal to. Okay? Because we have to consider that the stuff inside the absolute value could equal the positive option or it could equal the negative option for us to get a positive number. Why? Because absolute value always makes it positive. Hmm? Value 
value of 2x minus 5 plus 8 equals 3. What do we want to do first to solve this? Subtract 8. Subtract 8. What do I want to do next to solve this? Okay, so if I drop the bars and I do both options, what would we be writing down? 2x minus 5 equals negative 5 and 2x minus 5 equals 5. Can we do that here? You have to, they, it has to be positive in the bars. What was the statement you told me over here? That it had, everything is positive. Can absolute value equal something that's negative? No. no. So even though I have more stuff sitting on the inside, can absolute value equal something that's negative? No. So if you get to the point that you are ready to drop the absolute value bars, Negatives can happen anywhere up here with stuff sitting outside of the absolute value bar still. It's only in this step where we are getting ready to drop the absolute value. If we get ready to drop this bar and it equals something negative, this is a no solution. Why? Why is it no solution? Because it makes everything positive. Right? Because absolute value does what? Makes everything positive. Is negative 5 positive? No. No. So no matter what number I plug in there for x, I'm getting a positive number out. I'm never going to get negative 5. So like, it doesn't matter what's in the absolute value bars if it's negative. If it equals a negative. Now, be careful because we could have something like this. I can't say that this is a no solution because I still have stuff sitting outside of the absolute value bars to deal with, right? I'm not to the point that I'm dropping the absolute value bars. It's only where we make that split. number. Is this a no solution right off the bat? No, right? Because there's other stuff happening outside of those absolute value bars. Okay, so what am I going to do first? Or, no, you're right. Add four, right? So this is stuff. I undo addition and subtraction first. Why am I undoing addition and subtraction first? The order of operations backwards. So I'm going to add four to each side. What is negative 4 plus 4? Zero. zero. Now what? Divide by 2. Right? We need to get rid of that, so we're going to divide by 2. What is 0 divided by 2? Zero. Now what? You can't have a negative zero. Okay, so we can't have a negative zero, but can we have a positive zero? No. There's just zero. There's just zero. So is there a point what, to drop the absolute value bars, right? We should be considering two options. But does zero have two options? No. So is there any point in writing it twice? 
No, so if it equals zero, this is a little bit redundant. And we can just write one of them and just say x plus three equals zero because a positive and negative zero is not normal. So that's the one exception to having only one answer? This is the one exception. All right, we'll solve. 